anyone that doesn't know Jay Crowder, that's your problem. But one thing that you need to know about Jay is anytime he texts, it's in full capital letters all the time. Right up. That, that's, <laughs> that's me. And I, and I respect me. that. So the minute you sent me the text, I you already know. <laughs> uh, so, and then it was just you like, you know. you know, it's okay. How you doing, brother? I'm holding up. Uh, every, every, everything's good. Trying to get back to normal. Um, I got in the gym yesterday for the first time in a long, long time, a couple months. So, Where are you at right now? I'm in Miami. You are? So you went, yeah. where did you go in the gym? Yeah, I went to the facility. I went to the American Airlines. So we oh, opened okay. up yesterday. So, yeah. so the facility is open. Was there other players there? Who did you, did you work out with somebody? Are guys in town? Well, I was with the, you know, I'm a vet now. So, man, you done as half. Oh, don't, 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 don't hit me when I'm a vet now. <laughs> Me and UD was on the court. Me and Dennis Haslam was on the court together. We worked out together for 40 minutes on the court, 40 minutes weightlifting, and just got up out of there. But we never uh, came in contact with each other. We was always on different ends of the court, and that's that's the way it's going right now. I'm going to be really honest. If you guys played one-on-one, I don't really give a damn, Jay. Like, I, damn, I, I, yeah, we I didn't. Like, I know. I mean, like, one-on-one, I'm saying, like, if y'all putting in the work, right, like, you don't have, we to, didn't. You don't have to, like, be social distance while we work out. <laughs> you don't, Jay, I'm not the, Jay, you don't have to talk to me like that, Jay. We're just trying to take protocols, get back on the court, man. We're just trying to do the proper protocols, get back on the court, man. Okay, so what are your thoughts about getting on the court? I just want to say this. One of your Florida boys, my guy, Blake Snell, uh, pitcher, he was like, yo, they want us to risk our lives and, and get, you know, a, only a portion of our money. And buy. I, I understand that because they are asking a lot of they're asking. The country is asking a lot of a lot of people. Right. But yours, your our job, your job is, is kind of viewed as entertainment, even though this is what people need. What are your thoughts about going out in the court a little bit earlier or finishing the season, let's say, in a month, month and a half? Obviously. I just want to be safe. Uh, obviously, I miss the game. We all miss the game. We love the game. We love the work. But uh, I want to be safe. I don't want to feel like it's rushed, even though we're, we're missing out on a lot of money from from a league standpoint, from everybody taking pay cuts and, and things like that. But I just want everybody to be safe. We are we are entertainment, and we do have a job to do. Um, of course, I want the season to resume and, and see if we can crown a champion here soon. But I just want protocols to be um, – have everybody on the same page and – uh, players satisfied with what the league come up with, and we we come together as a uh, as a as a as a whole, and come together and try to get this thing back going. But I don't want to feel like we have to rush because people are at home not doing nothing. They just want to watch us play basketball and watch us work. But uh, I do want to get back out there, and I just want to make sure everybody's because we have families we have to come back home to. You got to realize that a lot, a lot of guys have kids, and, uh, and 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 you have to worry about that. You have to put the put that in perspective. So. Um, I'm I'm in for coming back uh, for, with the season, uh, as long as um, we have a few bullet, bulletin points from our player standpoint to, to get done with the league. I want to touch on something that, that uh, you weren't necessarily involved in, but like okay. there were your young boys. The whole Memphis situation, Andre Iguodala, all of that stuff. I don't, I, I don't have any opinion on it because I, I think even young players are allowed to voice their opinions. Um, but, like, as a vet in that moment, and you've been around, you guys were doing some really, really big things uh, in Memphis, hit a game winner against my Nets when I was working. I just want to know, like, what were your thoughts on them kind of – did you feel like Andre was kind of, like, being disrespectful? Or did you view that him as him just trying to make his next – now, I know you guys are teammates, so yeah. I'm not trying to do this, but just yeah. how did you view that? Well, at the time, I was just telling the guys, like, we're moving on. We're, we're moving on from that. When it happened initially in training camp, you know what I mean? I was just telling them, like, all right, this is the guys. This is what it is. As I gathered more information, it was a mutual thing. It was the organization telling him, we're going to handle some stuff. You stay put where you are. Mm -hmm. And it got misconstrued within, within the media of him being like, no, I don't want to come play for them. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think um, – as a player, as a basketball player, all right, my younger guys took like, well, F him too. Like, he don't want to come play with us. He don't want to give effort and come work and try to be special. For, forget him. So I was just trying to get those guys to just move on from it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know what was really going on with it, with that situation. But as I gathered information, it was like a mutual thing from both parties. And our front office telling him, we're going to get some stuff handled on our end, stay where you're at. 
And I think it could have been done a little differently to, to, to not get feelings involved and stuff like that. But yeah. from well, the player's like, standpoint, I, I, I understood. Like, I felt like Andre didn't really say much. He kind of He kept never, exactly. If you know, he never said anything. He never said, he never said anything. He teammates, nothing. Yeah, he never said anything. And that's, you know, I like messing with Andre. That's my guy. He's a good uh, but it was like, you know, as but I think it's a valuable lesson for like the young players, right? Yeah. So like, I love what you guys are doing in Memphis. Yeah. I love Ja. I love that. It's a business, man. It's a business, man. Well, it's a business. And, they, you know, sometimes you have to learn. And one thing that you know is mind your business. And that's not like a, that's not in a talking trash way. That's like, you focus on your business at hand. Don't worry about yeah. somebody else's plate or what else somebody else's business but. is. But. Uh, I, I honestly, I just felt like as you being a vet, I just thought you would have done a better job. But it's okay. Damn. It's okay. Damn. I tried, though. I tried because, but at the same time, like. I know you tried. That's I got to let them go. I got to let them go because they are going to be, Josh is going to be a superstar in our league. So you got to let him fill it out as he, as he goes, you know what I mean? So I, I, I did tell him behind the scenes what I felt, and I told, told him to, to our whole team, like, just, let's just move on. Like, it ain't that deep, for real. He ain't coming. Steph, okay. Steph, got, Steph got involved, right? Like, yeah, it, like, it, it got to you know, go back and forth from the media. You know, line, was, but, know, again, I it's all fun. Like, tw Twitter Twitter beefs are, that, that, you know, that stuff is funny to me. I got, I got no issue uh, in that. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.